This video has been brought to you in part by our incredible patrons and their continued support. Thank you. Today we welcome Alberto of the Exoplanets channel. He will be discussing an improved version of the Daedalus. We'll explain more about his channel later on. Be sure to check it out. The stars, uncountable pinpoints of light in the night sky, blindingly bright chariots arcing across the skies of their trailing wanderers. The ancient Greeks saw the nearest star, our sun, as a literal chariot, trailed by the planetes, the wanderers. A chariot driven by the titan Helios, or once by the foolhardy Phaeton, who could not control the fiery horses that drew it. As a starship engineer, one of the greatest challenges is the harnessing of stars of our own making to push or pull great chariots of metal. We must succeed where the mythical Phaeton failed. How can a star be made and tamed, and harnessed to a shining silver starship? There are innumerable methods to propel a starship, far too many to cover here. So instead, we've organized the various forms of starship propulsion into a few broad categories, illustrated by a particularly noteworthy or exemplar design. The basic problem is energy or lack of it. We live in the atomic age, so here's something that should put the energy required into perspective. The Orion was a spaceship designed in the 60s. It would have flown through space pushed by a series of nuclear explosions, quite literally riding on an intermittent star. The vessel could have reached the Alpha Centauri system in as little as a century and a half, though it was not truly a starship. To do so, it would have required the nuclear arsenal of the entire planet, all of the tens of thousands of nuclear warheads, enough energy to burn a continent to ash. That is the kind of energy a starship requires. The design of the Orion was simple in principle, though more complex in practice. On ignition, a conveyor system, not unlike that found in a bottling plant or factory, would take a miniature nuke, activate the timer, and toss it out the back. A blast shield would slam closed, and the bomb would detonate, the nuclear fury vaporizing a shell of tungsten, hurling it against a thick pusher plate. The entire ship was like a giant nuclear-powered pop rocket. Giant pistons would take up the brutal force of the nuclear fireball, slamming the series of hammer blows into a relatively constant acceleration that the crew and delicate machinery could actually survive. The Orion could have reached Mars in mere days, Saturn in a week or so, an Alpha Centauri in about 130 years. Slow by interstellar standards, but a far cry faster than any chemical or nuclear thermal rocket. Ultimately, the Orion was cancelled for a variety of reasons, but that's another subject for another day. The Orion, in a sense, leads us to our first broad category. Nuclear pulse drives. Nuclear pulse drives use either fission or fusion charges, detonated in rapid succession. In some designs, the charges are self-contained bombs in their own right, 
triggered internally by a chemical explosive, EM pulse, or antimatter, among other possibilities. The Orion is the prime example here. In other designs, the charges are little more than pellets of nuclear fuel, consisting of fissionables or fusibles. For this one, we'll hand it over to Alberto of the Exoplanets channel. This is a collaboration with Asteron X, an amazing YouTube channel about interstellar travel. The link is in the description below, make sure to subscribe them. Nuclear fusion rockets are considered to be a possibility for interstellar travel. They would have many advantages over nuclear fission, such as no risk of meltdown and higher delta V. Since the 70s, several designs of interstellar fusion rockets have been proposed. In 1978, the British Interplanetary Society announced Project Daedalus, a spacecraft that could achieve 12% the speed of light. In 2009, the same society, together with the Tau Zero Foundation, announced Project Icarus, a similar spacecraft that could achieve 15% the speed of light. That year, a physicist called Edward Winterberg announced a fusion spacecraft that could be used as a capacitor to produce proton beams that would ignite deuterium microbombs. However, this technology would have to be constructed in space and the cost would be too expensive. For this reason, Winterberg proposes that the nuclear fuel could be ignited by March generators. A March generator is a type of electrical circuit able to produce a high voltage pulse by using capacitors. In this line, chief scientist of Icarus Interstellar Adam Kroll has suggested that a two-stage configuration of the Winterberg rocket could achieve 20% the speed of light. The Starship would weigh 120,000 tons, and the amount of deuterium needed would be 12 million tons. It would only take around 20 years to reach the closest potentially habitable exoplanet, Proxima b. Thankfully, research on nuclear propulsion looks promising. The first nuclear fusion rocket could be ready for launch by 2028. To know more about this type of rockets, click the link in the description below and make sure to subscribe to Asteron X. Thank you very much for watching and feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thank you, Alberto. A travel time of 20 years is much faster than the 130 years the Orion would have taken. And yet this is only beginning. Such a tremendous speed is still slower than a snail's crawl compared with the interstellar void. Now, before we go, we want to give a shout out to Alberto of the Exoplanets channel. He reached out to us a couple of weeks back asking if we wanted to do a collaboration. Fast forward to several exchanges and here we are. The Exoplanets channel is a dedicated to habitable exoplanets, extraterrestrial intelligence, and interstellar travel. Alberto coordinates a international amateur astronomer organization who are hunting for exoplanets. And on his channel, he explains how you can do the same. Please do go and visit his channel. The more folks that get involved with interstellar travel one way or another, such as hunting for exoplanets, the better. Also, feel free to submit any questions you have. From here on, we're going to be doing shorter question and answer videos in between our normal videos as a filler. That way you, our viewers and subscribers, have a more constant flow of videos. Until next time, keep wondering about space. Next time we'll discuss more advanced fusion drives, from the aptly named Firefly to the groundbreaking Zeus.